when I started doing the foundation for him back in the early 2000, you know, right around 2000, we did it at my dad's country club at Forest Hills and they kind of became buds. And I'll tell you, Frank, a story that really shows the heart that Whitey had. Dad passed away a year ago and I was supposed to meet Whitey that morning and I went, I had to get word to him that I was tied up at the hospital with my dad. And I went outside after a couple hours to make a phone call, to start calling some of the family and talk. And he was sitting on a park bench at St. Luke's Hospital outside the ER waiting for me. You know, and it just meant the world to me. And I said, Whitey, how did you know where I was? He said, I looked for your car. I mean, he was just unbelievable. But that's the kind of heart he had. He was just, you know, he was funny. There was never a day I was with him that I didn't laugh out loud. I mean, that's the absolute truth. But he was, he was really a heartfelt, wonderful man. Mm. And I think a lot of people just saw the baseball genius and all that, but he was a lot more than that. And never mean-spirited, but he never held back what he really oh my felt. Gosh, and you no. probably were cringing sometimes. Right, I, in fact, I would tease him, you know, it's pretty much public knowledge that his hearing wasn't the best. And we'd be in restaurants and I'd be like, Whitey, you know, people have phones, you know, you don't have, you know, and he's like, oh, what do you worry about that for? Anyway, you know, he was going to do it his way, and that was the way, but it worked for him. It was the best. And his insatiable desire of baseball, it never waned, even in his 90s, right? No, no, he watched every game. He knew every statistic. He was, you know, he was interested in everything. I know he was real interested in Matt Holliday's son coming along. That was something he talked about a lot lately. And he just, he was totally focused on everything going on the cardinals were you know in his blood he he would go down there every day if he could have gotten you know got made it work and he was not a cocky man but he was so confident of his abilities like i asked him last year hey with this pitching staff would your team have been really any better if you were managing he says yeah we would have been <laughs> <laughs> no there's no doubt he had confidence but that's why he was successful I mean, yeah. he just was, he was just an, a really unique blend. And I just feel so fortunate that I got to work with him and spend all those years with him because it was a wonderful time in my life. 30 years of the foundation? How many years with him? Well, he had the foundation for around 30 years, I think. But I, I was involved with it for the last 22 or so. Yeah. Any idea on how much he may have raised or how many fields roughly? You know what? Yeah. I can't even yeah. begin to remember, Frank. It was just, we did three or four things a year. And he did a lot of, he was real interested in a lot of the rural areas that didn't have a big tax base and didn't have the wherewithal to, you know, raise a lot of money with parents and that kind of thing. And we, we helped a lot of areas that couldn't have done it any other way, I think. He, he, that meant a lot to him. And then one final thought, anything about his popularity? I always tell a story like at the Bragg and Rights game that introduced the governor, the senator, and then all of a sudden Whitey in the place would erupt. No, I, I, what about his popularity? Oh, it's just incredible. We couldn't go have a iced tea somewhere that 20 people didn't come up. I'd get up to go get him a drink and come back, and women were sitting next to him with babies, and he was taking pictures. He always said the iPhone was the worst 